So what are some basics of arrays? What I have for you here is a um, cpp.sh um, example. Um, so if you want to go ahead and open that and take a listen to this, uh, I will admit that's horrible. So I'll also point you at some page numbers as we're going along here. Uh, it's just a, a really um, basic, simple program. All I do is create multiple different kinds of arrays. Uh, number one, to prove that they can actually exist. Uh, and number two, um, to give you a couple of different, you know, um, iterations, uh, a couple of different loop styles, <coughs> excuse me, uh, to play with. Uh, so the very first example I have for you there is lines uh, numbers 12 and 13 uh, is the most basic declaration of an array. Uh, so on the, the very start there of line 12, uh, I have the kind of the array I'm about to declare, int. Uh, it's a number. Uh, I'll admit to you that this is a terrible variable name, uh, but I have republished this page so many times I'm not doing it one more time, so deal with it. Uh, and then in the braces there, uh, 10. So that means that this particular element or this particular array is going to have 10 elements. Um, on line number 13, you'll notice I have an integer called i uh, that has been set to 0. Um, what I want to mention here, and I'll mention it again later, uh, is that many, many of you uh, have been doing this to control your loops, uh, is declaring a global integer value uh, to kind of maintain your programmatic flow uh, as far as looping goes. And what I will tell you is that is abysmal. Uh, you know who you are. You've gotten, uh, you know, uh, messages from me on this, everybody. Um, I'm putting it in here so that once and for all I can say this is how we deal with it if you must, but really don't do this. Um, so that's the most basic declaration of an array on 12, essentially. Um, on lines 15 through 18, what we do is um, rather than simply have you, the developer, or um, you know, to, to get a number in from the user so that they can uh, tell you how big an array size they need, um, remember developing programs is about control, uh, and in so doing with a constant uh, integer, um, what we are doing is controlling exactly how big this array will ever be. B. Remember, with a constant, once it's declared and initialized, uh, which has to be done on the same line, uh, once it is declared and initialized, it cannot be changed. Uh, so on line number 16, what I am saying is we have a constant array size, uh, and that array size will always be 10. Uh, now what I've done on line number 18 is I have declared a double array, this time just to, to give you a double. Um, and that array called constant array demo, uh, you'll notice that this is a much better uh, array name. Uh, you'll notice that uh, in the uh, braces for that is array size. So this means that I am declaring uh, constant array demo uh, to be of size array size, which is 10. Uh, this size cannot change. So if you think about it, um, there is no reason for me to have months of the year that changes. There is no reason for me to have a uh, number of planets that changes, unless, of course, we keep killing Pluto and adding other planets, in which case this turns out to be a bad idea. Uh, but for the time being, let's just assume that array size can't change from 10. Um, so we can deal with it there. Uh, on line 21, uh, I have a string array. Uh, the thing um, we will kind of point you back to here is remember that a string is really an array of characters, uh, and that is how C++ treats a string. Uh, so what we have here is an array of arrays, and that is okay as far as C++ is concerned. Um, so uh, you'll notice that also here, uh, string array name, um, or name array, rather, uh, has the size. How many elements does it have? Array size. So it has 10 elements there. Um, so these are the three um, arrays we'll be using for this small uh, dummy shell program. Um, so now what we have to do is deal with the initial values here uh, to be loaded. Uh, the first one for um, the array, the integer array called number, 
um, you'll notice uh, that at the time of declaration, uh, when we instantiate, so when we create our array, um, we have not provided any values there. Now, you as the developer can actually go through and provide values there. Um, I would point you to page 388 in the text. Uh, what you'll notice there uh, is I have um, an array called um, days, um, and the, uh, the size of that is month. Um, so I'm telling you, uh, the future developers, that me, as the current developer, uh, has need for that. Um, what I'm essentially saying is, look, I've got months. Each one of those months has a number of days. Let me give to you the number of days. Um, here, uh, on page 388 again, uh, we can actually specify exactly what those are. Now, there's a couple of different ways to do this. Um, is uh, We could say equals and then in brackets. So not braces like we see here, but the, the, the curly type brackets. Um, what we can do is provide a comma-separated list of values. Those values start at array element 0 and proceed as many as you put in there. Um, do you need a fully initialized set of values? No, not really. Um, when you declare a, an array, uh, but do not give it default values, so just like I've done on line number 12, uh, the environment will provide default values for you. Uh, so an integer is 0, a double is 0, 0.0, floating is 0, 0.000, um, character is null, and string is null. That doesn't mean it's 0, it just means that it's empty. Um, so you can actually specify uh, what your default values are, uh, and you would do that by using the brackets to show, hey, these are my values, uh, and then inside a comma separated list. So one comma two comma three or uh, inside of quotations name one comma name two comma name three for strings etc. So I have um, determined that I am going to use a loop to go through and actually uh, initialize my value. So uh, enter in values into those different elements of the array. Uh, that happens after line number 23 there. Um, I have just simply created a while loop. Um, you'll notice that i uh, is that global integer that I've used before. This is a programming mistake, but I am pointing everybody to it so that everybody can stop using this. Um, and i is less than 10 because, again, um, an array starts at element 0, not at element 1. So that means... By the time I've filled in 10 elements in my array, really it's number 9. Um, so less than 10 works here. Don't say less than or equal to 10 because that's going to be an off by one error. And like we mentioned in the previous um, podcast, there is no bound checking in C++. So if I do that and I read a, a value in for what I think is the 11th value in my array, nothing. Uh, that is not preserved. It is not entered anywhere. I will not, as a user, and I will not, as a developer, get any word uh, from the environment that nothing has happened. So be careful with doing that. Um, so all I've done uh, is set up my while loop um, to um, essentially uh, use the iteration through the loop uh, to read a number or to read a value, rather, uh, into the element of the array called number. What does all that mean? On line number 28, uh, I am adding i plus 100, so 100, and then 101, 102, 103, as I go through my loop. Um, so that's essentially all I'm doing. Um, the next set of uh, essentially there's a huge comment block followed by a very, very short block of code uh, is me printing out the, um, the values in the elements that you have, uh, well, that we have um, essentially read into that array. Um, so you can see that on line number 42 uh, is uh, what I am doing is a formatted print um, in the quotation marks there, uh, inside of my parentheses, 
uh, number and then the, the brace uh, percent D. Uh, what that's still going to do is give to me um, something that looks like um, essentially the array that I'm printing out here. So it'll actually say number, so that's referring to the, the array. Uh, inside of the brace will be uh, the iteration of the loop that I'm going through, uh, and then it will actually print the number, uh, sorry, the value in the element of that particular piece of the array. Um, you can run this and you can actually see it. It's the very first uh, block of 10 elements uh, that are printed. So that'll show you a while loop, a simple while loop. Uh, if we scroll down a little bit to line number 49, uh, we have a for loop. So here, all of the, the typical for loop formatting applies. Uh, I have my uh, iteration, uh, that's J. Uh, the only reason I'm using J here uh, is because we have I in the previous one. Now, that I we used in the previous uh, example for my while loop is the global um, I. What we would use here is the local I. So inside of the header for that for loop, uh, what we would be uh, essentially declaring is that int i is a local variable. It's only good inside of the scope of 4. Uh, so what essentially that means is by the time, um, and I'm looking at the shell again, uh, by the time uh, line number 55 rolls around, that the previous three lines of code, the value or the, the version of uh, that integer i is completely gone after that. Um, in order to not confuse you any further, um, what I have done is simply picked another letter, J. So H I J, it's the next letter that comes after that. Um, so J is controlling my loop here. Um, you'll notice that J is less than array size. So because I have um, array size um, as a constant, that means I know that this is going to loop 10 times. Um, and that's going to work for us. So here uh, I have my double array, uh, and I'm just giving you values there. J plus 100, so that's going to be uh, 100 on the first time through, because 0 plus 100 is 100. Divide that by 2 is 50. Um, line number 53, I'm giving you a formatted print, so I can see, again, what the uh, constant array demo, that's my double array, um, element number is, and then the value stored in that element. So if you were to run the program here one more time, uh, what you would notice is um, that array being printed uh, and the values in that array being printed out for you. Finally, uh, starting with the uh, comment block on line number 56 and working down, uh, what we are doing is reading values into and reading values out of our string array. Now, keep this in mind. Actually, keep this uh, entire code snippet down here in mind. When we get to the uh, 7.1 challenge problem, uh, we'll actually be um, taking strings in from a file and comparing them. The best way to be able to do this uh, is actually with an array. Um, and this is how we would essentially do two things. Number one, uh, how we would traverse, uh, so move from one name to another name to another name. Uh, and what we can do is compare um, the elements uh, of one array with the element in another array. Um, so this is how we would go through and allow a user to actually enter in input. Um, for this particular example down here, uh, this is our name array. So you'll remember from um, way up at the very top here of our, uh, of our shell program, um, we have an array uh, that is populated with strings, and that is called name array. Um, so what we have is a for loop here, uh, starting on line number 60. Uh, and again, you'll notice I'm reusing J. That's perfectly okay. The previous J um, that, that integer, the value of that integer, the storage location for that integer, all of that has died because I am out of the scope of that program block. Uh, so as soon as I went to line 55, the previous one died, and now this one uh, is instantiated on line 60. 
uh, and also will be terminated in short, short order. Um, inside of my for loop here, I have a little out statement um, so that the user knows to enter a name to store to my array. Uh, and then you'll notice on line number 65, I have my get line. So remember, strings do not take a C-I-N. C -I -N. Uh, they take a get line. Um, so this you can see here on line number 65. So get line, open paren, C in, C I N, uh, comma, and then array name. So again, that's the, the array we're referring to. And the element is uh, J. So that's the element in the array. Uh, the first loop through, this is zero. The second loop through, this is one. The third loop through, this is two. Um, and we'll start to populate that array with names. Um, that's all we have to do there. Um, the line 68 and below uh, is uh, simply another for loop, almost exactly the same as this one was. Um, but instead of uh, producing names for you to type in, this is spitting names for you uh, to view on the back end. So uh, if you run this program, uh, what you'll notice is, you know, enter a name to store, enter a name to store, enter a name to store, and then it'll spit out for you stored name, stored name, stored name. Uh, now, really quickly, a word on ranged or range based for loops, uh, which we can actually see on page 396 in your text. Make that 394, it's easier. Looking at 394 in your text, uh, really it's simplest to simply point out um, it's line number 15. Uh, rather than having all three of the arguments in a typical for loop, um, here we have a range based for. Uh, so when it is that C++ uh, during the runtime or compile time environment, uh, when it is that C++ knows that you, the developer, are pointing at an array, um, because arrays are built in uh, to the standard library, um, C++ knows it has some functionality built in there for it. Um, in a range-based for loop, there are only two arguments that you have to provide. Uh, the argument on the left-hand side, so the very first one, um, is the, um, the type of the argument to accept here. Um, so you'll notice here on line number 15 it says string val. Um, that string val is simply uh, you declaring a, a type to hold the contents of the element of those arrays. Um, so because planets is a string um, array, we need a string with a, a variable name on the left-hand side. Uh, on the right-hand side of the colon, we need the name of the array. Uh, you'll notice you do not have to provide the braces here. It's simply the name of the array. Um, it's a little strange. Uh, it's, it kind of takes a second to, to get used to the, the shorthand for this. Um, but once you have the shorthand there, it's actually really quite nice. Um, what I can tell you is, in version 11, of C++. So if you are using the uh, Visual Studio, this will work on uh, integers, doubles, floating point, and characters. Um, if you are using Visual Studio, it will also work on strings. If you are using the shell, cpp.sh, it will not work on strings. Um, a string is um, different than a C string. Uh, the cpp.sh version um, says this is, this is not a legal operation uh, in the way that we have been using it. In Visual Studio, on the other hand, uh, this is, like we see on 394, a perfectly legal operation. Uh, when you are building your challenge products, um, understand that the, the shell will not do what you are looking at on 394 here. Simply use... Um, a standard for loop with all three arguments and you're ready to go. Um, that's really the only difference there. So there you have it, the basics of an array, declaring an array that we can see at the very top of our cpp.sh uh, shorthand program listed below the, uh, the podcast here. Um, iterating through an array, uh, we are doing that with the while the for and the range based for loop. Um, getting numbers um, read um, into the elements of an array, uh, we are using the for loops to do that, or 
you can have a user enter in numbers into the elements in an array or enter in values rather into the elements of an array uh, and you can see that at the very bottom here of our short code snippet.